Welcome back everyone, I'm MTG Joe. Uh, so we are going to be deciding effectively what we're going to do is our next budget build series. So I thought what I'd do is I'd play a couple of the early decks that have come out from the MTGO list. And then from there you let me know which one uh, you kind of want to see most. So I thought what we'd do is we'd be playing this uh, Jun, but it's really a, a green black light splash of red uh, adventure deck. Uh, playing with Lucky Clover. So I think Ethan Sachs was the deck originator from uh, an MTGO list uh, that went 5-0. Also thought we'd play Esper Dance of the Mance, uh, kind of a control deck style. Uh, and then from there we'll decide which we want to do as our next budget build series. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar with the budget build series, we just did one for Golos Field. Uh, effectively what I do is build out three decks, uh, one of them being uh, as cheap as possible, um, so for the budget Golos, it was eight rares, it was uh, four Golos, four Field of the Deads, and everything else in the deck was commons and uncommons. So it's easy to build on Arena. And then from there, we just scaled it to play uh, slightly more modified versions in a mid-budget, and then a no-budget version where we played as many uh, of the good cards as we needed. So it's kind of a guide to help you build as you're starting to amass either a brand new Arena collection or just getting cards from Throne of Eldrain. Uh, so for this particular deck in question, this is playing around the adventure mechanic. So you'll have these new uh, cards. Uh, basically with the adventure half, you can cast as though it was a spell. Um, and then if it resolves, it goes into an exile zone, uh, which you can then cast the creature half. Um, what we're able to do is with these adventure cards is with Lucky Clover, we get to double them. And then with Edgewall Innkeeper, we get to uh, draw cards every time we cast them. So it gives us some added utility, gets us uh, basically free value and free card draw by just playing out our deck. So the adventure spells we are playing in the deck. We have Falmar Knight, which is a card draw ability, and on the flip side is a 1-1 Death Toucher. Uh, this allows us to, if we have Clover out, refill our hand if we don't have an Edgewall and Keeper in play. Uh, Order of Midnight uh, allows us to return certain cards from our graveyard uh, to, our uh, to our hand. Uh, this allows us to recycle some of these effects. Uh, two legions end in the main. Um, I'm actually going to make a switch because I've seen other versions. Sorry, there is the uh, the one card I really liked in it was uh, Smitten Sword Tooth. So you have uh, Knight here, Knight here, Knight here, uh, Murderous Riders and Knight. So you can drain your opponent and gain a bunch of life. So this is a pretty useful way to kind of get yourself back in the game. Uh, so two smitten sword masters in place of the legion's end don't think we really need the the removal main we have the creatures uh, we also have removal in the sense of murderous rider and bone crusher giant and then you could double up the murderous rider uh ability but you do lose four life from that so having the life gain is actually pretty relevant so uh, play it like that you get the removal of bone crusher giant as well uh, once upon a time can fix our mana early or dig us for creatures we have Lucky Clover, which will double our spells. Lovestruck Beast can create two 1-1s one if we have a Clover out. If not, it's just a big body as a 5-5. Five five. We also have a couple of other 1-1s. One uh, so these guys here, uh, that can also get it going. And then uh, one of these standouts from our Golos deck was Beanstalk Giant. In this deck, you can get two lands from it if you have Clover out. And then it's just a really big body that smashes in. Uh, mana base wise, you are going to be playing a lot more basics, just in the sense you are playing Beanstalk Giant. So that helps from a rare count standpoint. Uh, we have a couple shocks and then Fabled Passage for a more, uh, like a less painful mana base. Sideboard wise, we have Duress uh, versus Control, Veil of Summer, Allegiance End, Four Noxious Grass versus Green Things, uh, Assassin's Trophy, and uh, for catch all removal. I'm actually going to shave. I had gone up to fine finalities, but since we have the Order of Midnight, that can effectively do the same. So I'll go up another Legion's End because we cut it from the main. And then uh, we have Finality, can also be a board wipe in our deck, and then a couple Ceratops versus the blue base matchups in Oko. So we'll run it through. Uh, I've been playing a lot of the Simic Oko deck, 14 and 9 with it. I've been noticing we go on, I'll win like four in a row, lose three in a row, win five in a row, lose like two or three in a row. So still net positive, but uh, it's a little inconsistent, especially in best of one. Um, so I want to see how Jun Adventures plays out, and we can go from there. Um, in respect to the budget build series, I'm currently writing up the Golos one. 
and we'll have it up on uh, Aether Hub as soon as I'm done. I'm battling the flu still, so trying to rest while still work. Um, so we'll play that. I'm going to keep this hand. We have our colors. Once upon a time could find us another spell. And then the edge wall just gives us more card advantage. So make sure to cast this first. Um, I actually like Love Struck Beast in the dark. The one thing is we just got two clovers. Um, anything with Oko has that you can get it out on turn two has felt like ridiculously strong. Um, so I'm leading with the, the token here in case it dies. Um, so the Simic deck, like when you can have Goose into Oko, it's really powerful. The games where we didn't get a turn two Oko is a little bit more variable. But overall was quite pleased with the power level of the deck. Um, I, I don't want to risk getting... Uh, that's probably fine. This probably is a flash deck. So getting this down now. Um, the Gates deck felt okay at times. Uh, it wasn't the most consistent. Um, I've lost to this deck quite a few times and it was really resilient. Uh, Esper Dance of the Mance can have some explosive turns but struggles against any of the field decks as usual. Um, the Grixis Fire list, I've lost to it an unhealthy amount of times. So I'm going to lead off attacking with both. If they flash in a creature to block the Edgewall Innkeeper, I have Bone Crusher Giant to kill it. So we'll see what they do here. So you basically want to force their hand. So yeah, they have the Brineborn. So just go to full control. Against Flash, if you can keep their threats off the board early, then it's an easy way to, to just get advantage. What decks have you been playing, Jelly? <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so same thing. I think we actually force their hand here. Um, we just play it out like this. So I'm more inclined here to play uh, beforehand because on 4 mana they would have Frilled Mystic, on 3 mana it's just Sabotage. That sounds pretty sweet. Are you using like Vanifar to search up stuff or are you just doing like the blink package? Or are you doing Lumbering Battlement at all? I'm fine with that trade. So here I'm going to attack in first. See if they want to offer the trade. So they take the trade here, I'm fine with that. So I'm going to Beanstalk Giant first to get a forest and then we'll cast the Edge Keeper. If they counter it, it's not the end of the world. The nice thing with Adventure 2, especially against uh, this counter based deck, is uh, we get two spells per card, whereas they can only counter one half at a time. Okay, so we got Clover now. So I'm gonna force their hand. So 
so it's pretty much a must counter for them. Yeah, they go negate. Now we can get ahead here. So we're at six mana, so I can go Edgewall, Innkeeper, and Lovestruck Beast next turn. I still think that's the play. So they either have to counter this and then we get to draw a card or we get to draw two cards and they could counter Love Struck Beast. I'm okay with that. the trade here they likely don't take it um, I'm gonna do this on their turn because if they want to counter it then they tap out on their turn and if we get beanstalk giant down we're in a pretty good spot uh, what do we have in our graveyard Ooh, okay yeah Probably. Get the order here. So they stop on our upkeep and concede. Um, so in this matchup, Veil, Ceratops, Finality. Uh, the Smitten Swordmaster is probably kind of insignificant here. Lovestruck Beast is okay. We well, could block the uh, Order of Midnight's not bad because we can recycle. Maybe go down a Beanstalk Giant. Legion's End's okay. But they'll it only deals with some of their creatures. Duress is fine in these matchups, but I usually like to be proactive instead of uh, I could bring them in maybe to get under them, but it doesn't get their creatures. Maybe just bring in an assassin's trophy as catch all removal. Just shave the giants. Cause this can sweep up all their creatures. Assassin's Trophy could get rid of the wolf. Noxious Grasp. Like, we just have Murderous Rider. Just kill them that way. Because they it doesn't kill any of their blue creatures. Maybe Hedge and... Bring in one Legion's End. Okay, stop yelling at me. <laughs> The only tough thing about streaming so many different decks, like a different deck every day, is you gotta learn all the sideboards. Um, I'll keep this hand. We got Once Upon a Time. Hmm. So we could do the removal or we can do love struck and get a creature on one to start putting pressure. Uh, I think we go bone crusher. Just being able to deal with one of their early threats. And we'll just search for a mountain here. I usually play like similar archetypes like I'll play variations of ramp or of like control where the game plan's similar
So I'm gonna lead, just in case we get Murderous Rider, I'll lead like that. So if they flash in a creature, we kill it. And we haven't even gotten a Clover to resolve. So we'll see what we do here. This only returns creatures. Ooh. That's probably very good against us. Open your heart to the magic that dances around you. It's not for you. Trust me. So I'm just going to force some damage in. You know what? So we have to make a decision here. We can get Clover down or we force them to deal with the Bone Crusher. They could just make this in. I think utility-wise, long-term, Clover presents a better value. In fact, this just goes up so quick. So I'm gonna draw two cards next turn. That way, even if they counter it, we're kind of flooding a bit. So they can make a 3-3 three, three here. Probably drop Forest because then I can also play Falmar Knight afterwards. So they'd have to need three counter spells effectively. And then the Death Toucher can block this and then we can always get it back with Order of Midnight. Let's broaden your existence. So we got Beanstalk as well. I think we just draw some cards this turn. So they can't that side, so we don't get to get the card, the second card draw. Take another three here. Oh dear. I'm okay with that. Uh, so we can go two spells here. So they have a counter, most likely. Um, let's keep open the red. They could frilled mystic. And see if they want to do the trade. Sounds good, Jolly. Have a good day. Thanks for stopping by. So they go food token again. And all your kids are gone. So I'm gonna go edge wall here. It gives us either forces out of counter. I feel about wild, wild born. So they have that. So I'm gonna return Edge Wall to the hand.
Uh, probably want more black. Uh, just more lands. So, Edgewall, or the Order of Midnight can't block. This Oko is just kind of running its course. I can just double spell with two Bone Crushers next turn. And now that we've seen Wildborn and Oko, I'm going to bring in the four Noxious Grasps. We'll be in a better state after that. I've been playing against Flash a lot in Best of One, and they don't usually main uh, Oko. Since you got to tap out for it. Also in future games, us being on the play. Gaze into my face and put on your true shape. Um, so here I'll trade with the Wildborn. At the very least, it forces mana. Okay, Murderous Rider. So a Night Pack here. Like, we gotta kill the night pack, I think. Before they declare blocks. So here they still gotta decide how they wanna deal with this. They can trade, but... Oh, this thing's got reach. Oops. Fear your truth. Should have probably paid attention there. It's fine, we got rid of one of them. They can Oko one of these food tokens. They get two blockers. And like the thing is with Oko, you gotta waste resources in terms of attacking it, otherwise it just clogs up the board for us, and it reduces all our creatures into three threes. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. Um, no blocks here. Probably suggests to me that they have some sort of like flash spell. So if they do like another wolf. They pay the one. So they can eat here. Have Oko take four. Okay, so they're just gonna do the trade here. So they could shrink down Bone Crusher and then attack in, but I would double block the Night Pack Ambusher. Surely you must be famished. Okay, so we got Love Struck. Not really profitable blocks. So I think we're pretty much dead here. This smells to me like they have another wolf. Yeah. Okay, so they got us there. We spent so much time focusing on this. Bringing the Noxious Grasp. Uh, take the Legion's End is actually probably pretty good because we've seen a lot of smaller creatures. 
I uh, could probably cut down a clover. Get rid of the beanstalk. Uh, how many lines do we play? 24, but we've cut our curve quite a bit, so let's get rid of one. Get rid of a couple bone crushers. They're not as relevant here. Their creatures are bigger, and we're bringing in other removal. So let's run this. Flash is probably a tough matchup because we don't present the fastest clock. We do get a lot of utility, but for most times we're playing one card per turn. I'm gonna keep this because we have Ceratops. There is a play to play Foulmire. Maybe made sense to do that, to start pressuring him. Um, actually, I'm going to do this. This gives us the card draw. Because I don't see us playing it for 3 mana anytime soon. So it's a little tricky here because we're missing both a black and a green. So... I think we just attack with a Falmar. Just end the turn. I don't really want an Assassin's Trophy here. Uh, that puts him up ahead of land. Maybe we do it. Like they could wolf this turn and frilled mystic, so I think we just pass. Falmire can deal with the Brineborn. Okay, that's fine. My guess is they make a food here and just pass. If they make Edgewall a 3 3, not completely against that. See if they attack him first. Blind. Remain blind. So I'm waiting on the land here in case we draw one of the colors, like we did there. So here we do have the choice. We can Ceratops. But I do like Ceratops with haste for the following turn. So I think we just do this and then try to force out a counter on there instead. Get it to tap out a bit. <coughs> Sorry. We want to make it so they don't get utility of being able to counter on our turn. And then like Wildborn helps a bit in their post board matchups. Okay, so that's likely Frilled Mystic. But we have two removal spells, so I'm fine to do Murderous Rider here. Wonder if that like stifle card sees play, the clone one. So this just forces a card out of their hand, which it does. So we are short of mana here, which is a little annoying.
let's just play this out. Hey Lullaby, how's it going? We are one and one against game three against Flash here. Okay, we got Clover. So I'm gonna hold my mana up in case they drop a wolf to try to block. Assassin's Trophy this. So if we can draw something other than lines will be pretty good. Really like any... Um, they usually play Quench, so let's play out our land. Doesn't matter at this point. There's Sailor. The nice thing is this Foulmire can just block this Brineborn with Death Touch, so they can't really attack with it. They could attack him with Frilled and Spectral, but we're still winning that race. QQ. So we're testing out a couple different decks that we may want to play during the next budget build series. So this is one of them. Uh, the other one we are considering is... Uh, they played Oko. So this is post-board game. So we won game one. Game two they brought in an Oko. They got it down turn three and we couldn't recover from it. Sweet. We got Grasp. Show me a wolf. So just spending their mana to draw a card, that's pretty good for us. They also can't attack with all three unless they have another flash creature. No blocks for us. Hey, that's good. So we attack like this. So we can murder Strider and get two kills. So first one goes here. Second one goes here. Six damage in. Game. Do we flex on them? Just show them we had it. No, just in case they haven't summoned. <laughs> we do that, they unsummon our Foulmire and then somehow lose. All right, took them out there. Um, let me run this deck once in best of one. Let's just see how it goes. Still trying to find the deck I want to play for the weekend's event. We've, we've played a lot of Oko Ramp. I'm, that I've recorded like actual games, like so not either myself or the opponent flooding or missing lines. 23 plus, probably about 30 games in with the deck. Um, yeah, I keep this hand. I'm gonna lead on the Lovestruck Beast here. I usually like keeping the Innkeeper until we can play it. It's a little awkward with this Fable Passage right now, but it does get us our black mana. And then sometimes too, like if they have removal. Okay, so that's... I'd probably still just do that. 
I'm a little worried if this is the Jeskai uh, Super Friends. Like the... Whatchamacallit, the Adventure... Or Fires of Invention. They usually play four Clarions. Yeah, yeah that one. Uh, they usually play four Clarions main. It just looks like a budgety version. Fae of Wishes. Ooh, they do defensive Fae of Wishes. I'm just gonna kill it. And then attack in. Because even if they Teferi next turn... Then um, we still have like follow up place, and if they bounce either of these, we just get reset. Okay, we go Narset. Don't really care about Narset. Ooh, I actually do care about Narset because I can't draw cards off it. I see what you're doing, opponent. Yeah, I've seen that, and I've seen a couple of them will play, like, random cards that are off-color um, in their sideboard. Okay, so they get Time Wipe, so that's a good indication for us to not overextend here. Um, so I don't get the card draw, but I still think it's probably worth it. It presents a body... This will go get us a red mana that we need. And like we still have a turn here. And then I can just cast this to draw some cards after. Okay, so they go fires here. They'll get one more spell. They go drawn. The one nice thing with fires deck is it's like the opposite of flash where we know our spells are going to resolve. I would imagine that they probably time wipe this turn. Uh, do you want to thin it out? I don't want any more lands. Ooh, that's actually very good for us. Um, so we gotta kill first before we draw. Um, so I can do... Are you a knight? Yeah, so I can drain for one, two, three, draw some cards as well. I can do that. Cast it, yeah, so I can do that. Yeah, so anything that's kind of slow usually isn't a... I haven't played too, too much with it. So I'm just going to take my card draw here, refill our hand. Get in some extra damage here. And then we can go from there. Um, the Grixis Fire version. So Grixis is a little bit more grindy and disruptive, but I feel Jeskai wins out of nowhere with Sarkin. Um, like you usually win with like Nico Bolas. Oh, they probably go to time wipe too. Come to me. Uh, that's fine. Their order seems a little off. My. Or oh, they just had that, which is gross. Um. So probably have to do this. Get back Edgewall and Keeper. Just refill my hand. And then you can't block. You're at least a life linker. Let's cast you out. Just play that. 
So it's probably the game's gone a little too long that Jess guy's going to be able to take advantage. Ah, interesting, they're playing Shimmer. May have made sense to play Lovestruck Beast there, actually. Because these can't actually attack at the Sarkin. We had the mana anyways. I summon you. Jeez, and they have another Clarion. It's a big life swing. Let's uh, tell a story. So Beanstalk can get us a bunch of lands. Play it out, it's big. That draws us cards. I think the play is to just draw cards. We're like really dead anyways. Probably too aggressive early with that uh a murderous rider on the uh, the, the fairy favorite one, the search, the mastermind's acquisition one. Makes sense. They are kind of running out of cards. If we can deal with the Sarkin. Oh, that's good. That is good, good, good. We're gonna take some damage. But it lets us get in for a bunch. There is no peace in defeat. Um, and then I'm just gonna play this out. It'll go back into our library, it draws us a card. They likely time wipe here. Narsa, find something else. 40 cards. We've actually drawn more cards than them. This little one one is actually surprisingly good. Okay, so that does nothing. That's basically a dead draw. I don't think that works how you thought it did. So we need to get this out of the way so we can draw some cards. Game died on me because Arena is stable and definitely not still in beta. So we're not committing more to the board because we know they have the time wipe in hand. But Love Struck's a nice follow up because it puts a lot of power. So we want to try to dodge like a Sark in here. Fairy's fine, they could bounce this, but it doesn't really set us back that much. Sorry again, uh, Arena crashed. Uh, once we play for about 45 minutes, it just gets super laggy. And eventually just dies. So it's a nice uh, kind of build back here. We get the tokens back. Ooh, and a beanstalk. So this was after a board wipe, what we're able to do with this deck. Uh, probably just get a black and a green. We got Beanstalk as a follow-up, so we can put pressure on them with this hand, and then go from there. We've seen two Clarions. Like, it's actually kind of silly. How many Knights do we have? None. This drains them for a bit. Um, 
I think we do this. We give them one turn, they have it. Like, Arena's a card game. That's not heavy in terms of the graphics. I have an i7 9700, 32 gigs RAM, and an RTX 2060 graphic card. Shouldn't be this bad. Um, so that's actually sweet, because this doubles here, so we do two, deal two, and then Beanstalk kills him. Got him! Right, we'll run uh, one more for quick for the best of one. We rank up. Gold tier 1, not bad. We were gold tier 4 last night in between Broco. Actually, want to update this. I've been starting to just put like our records. So we did a best of 3, we won 2 to the 3, and then we won the 1 here for best of 1. I just want to know performance wise how the deck plays out. We'll do one more ranked. These stupid cats and like foxes animation does nothing for like the actual game other than just leg it more than it needs to. Um, his hand's a little loose. We go first, so maybe we try it. Past turn here. No sense of giving them more info. So this is likely another Just Guys Fires list. It's been a lot of that in the best of one queue. Just do this. Past turn. Oh, it's Grixis, so it's Grixis fires. Choose your fire. Probably the Murderous Rider or the Edge Wall is my guess. We're probably gonna get black here regardless. Yeah, there's been a lot. Um, like it's a cool deck. And it's like super frenzy, so you're really just jamming in four fires into an existing like Just Guy Super Friends list. So you got rid of like the Vox Ambers and stuff. Okay, so they respect the innkeeper. So we're gonna get a swamp, it just turns on more of our hand. Present a good enough clock. They can kill our smaller one. Ritual of Soot does kind of clean this up, but I think we're okay regardless. Can Foulmire Knight. Okay, Murderous Rider. Sorry about that. So Smitten's not too bad. We can get a couple knights out. It's a way that we can have some reach. Clover's actually good here. So we can set up a turn with Clover and then just try to burn them out. It's like a once upon a time for land, play Clover. That plays us around Cryocarnarium or Ritual of Soot. My guess is Clover. In the end, like the opponent's kind of spinning in circles. We've only cast two spells. Actually, 
one spell and then this but they've used a lot of resources to deal with it okay so we got love struck beast Um, I'm gonna once upon a time here. Uh, we can do the blood crypt. I kind of want another forest though. Because forest lets us play this. Oh. So they have Ritualist it, they use it, but we're really only losing one card out of it and we've already gotten some utility out of the back half. That's fine. Okay, so we have Murderous Rider. Just play it like this. It's a 5-5. Five five. If we draw into a 1-1, one, one, it can attack. Sorry, I'm just doing an update on my laptop, just make sure it doesn't freeze. pretty good here presents a stream of blockers we, we do have the so I can do this for red source but I think we need to murder us rider unfortunately ah oh, crap 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 we lost I played the wrong side oh that's terrible now they have virtual assist Ah, uh, that's so bad. They get two card. They get a card draw out of it. Fat fingered. So I have Narset that kind of screws it up. That's very annoying. We would have been in a much better position. We're just casting these drawns now, so they're likely going to be finding what they need. Cast this properly now. My has been destroyed. They got fires. We're probably dead here. They can go find Nicobolus. That was a misplay on my part, and it's going to be hard to recover from here at this point. They're going to get so much utility out of that and control our board. We also didn't hit another land for quite some time, uh, but 
we got overall pretty good three and two punted that one to probably the point where may have been a better position but stack was pretty fun actually I'll jam some more games see what works best still decide between the two probably play the Oko one um, overall felt a little bit more broken especially if you could get turn two Oko but we'll wrap this one up I'll be back later today with uh, Dance of the Mance and we can go from there uh, thanks for tuning in all and have a great one.